Of course, with Superbase, we can subscribe to the changes of a table. Here, I got a table order with 20 fake orders, okay? So what I can do, I can click here on API Quick Start, or I can go down here on API Docs. But if I click here, I got a quick access to the API documentation related to Superbase. So I got all the code uh, related to the SDK. And when we go down, we see here that we got subscribe to changes. And here we got the code that we can import into our application. So right now in my app, it's totally empty. I don't got uh, the orders. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get back here and I'm going to create a new function called fetch orders. Okay, so here it will be an asynchronous function. All right. What I want to do before uh, triggering this fetch order, I want to create an interface because I'm on TypeScript, which will be an interface order. In this interface, I will have the model of my table. So here it's going to be a name, ID, I created that, etc., etc. And down there, I want to create a const orders. Here is going to be a reference and they, this will be an array. So I'm waiting for an array. What I want to do also is to specify here is going to be of type order. Here we go. So now we are going to store our orders here. What I can do is to write my function fetch order. So it's going to be really simple. I'm going to fetch from Superbase my orders and I'm going to apply the orders to this variable here. Then I want to trigger this fetch order at the end of my code. And when I get back, here we go, we've got all the orders. Okay, so now I'm going to put the order this way and here I'm going to put the uh, Superbase instance here. So I'm going to get back here and here we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change data here and it will appear immediately here. But before I need to implement my code to subscribe to actually, to subscribe to the table orders. So the first thing I need to do is to create a const channel here and I'm going to call Superbase, okay? And then I'm going to call the function channel. So here it's going to be my new channel for others, let's say, okay? Well, you can give the name you want. And here we go. So here we are creating a channel. So I'm going to put some space here to be more clear. Here we are. Then I'm going to type on and here I will take three arguments. The first one, it's an argument that is totally uh, normal, which is Postgres changes. Here we are. Then I'm going to specify, okay, the event that I want. So here, the event that I want is to have all the order back, okay? Here you can put uh, the specific key that you want. The schema is going to be public, okay? And here I'm going to specify the table, which will be orders. Okay, so right now it's on red because the last argument will be a callback, a function. And this is where I'm going to catch my event. So I'm going to console log my event. Here we are. Last thing, if you want to put a filter, you can put it here by typing here body is equal. And here you can type your filter. So you got equal, you got LTE, etc., etc. Me, I don't want that. I want to get back the changes here. Okay, so here we are. At the end, what we need to put, of course, is dot subscribe, which is a function. So now when we're gonna have changes, what's gonna happen is that we are going to console log the changes here. But before we have to enable this real time. So what we're gonna do, we are going to click here on database and we're gonna go here on replication, okay? On replication, I got super base real time on insert, update, delete, truncate. But here, as we see, we've got zero table. So we need to say, hey, this table is enabled for Superbase real time. So I'm gonna click on zero table and here we've got orders, orders by client and here we've got client. So here I'm going to check on here. Here we go, orders is enabled for real time. Back into my application, we see that here Ava Wilson is living on in Chicago on the 60606 zip code. I'm going to change our zip code. And down there in the console, we are supposed to get an event console log. So I'm going to put zero. And look at this. We've got the answer from our subscribe. And we've got a lot of data here. We've got the commit timestamp. We've got an update. We've got the hold data and we've got the new data and we can see that the zip code is now zero. So now I have to update in my array of orders 
Okay. This, uh, actually, this new data for Ava Wilson. Back in my code, I'm going to destructure my event. So it's going to be const. Here, it's going to be my event. And here, it's going to be new. However, I don't want to use new. I want to type new order because here in this scope, it's an order. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply to orders value an orders dot value dot map. And here I'm going to uh, check the holder. Okay. So what I'm going to do here exactly, I want to check if it's the right idea that I want to change inside my array. So I'm going to type if order dot ID is equal to new holder dot ID. Here we are. What we want to do here is to return an object that will merge at first the order but the new data, so new data here, the new order this way, okay? And at the end, of course, we want to return also the other orders. All right, so here we are supposed to merge the old data with the new data inside our orders array locally. Back in my application, Ava Wilson is on the bottom and our function will help us to not move those elements. I got Jack Th Jackson Thompson here at the top and I'm going to change Jackson J Thompson here and it's supposed to change Jackson Thompson on my app in real time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put code with Guillaume, okay, as a value. I'm going to type enter and look at this. Here we are. It changed my value for code with Guillaume. So it's really, really useful. What I'm going to do, I'm going to change also the price and this time it's going to be $100. Look at this. And here we are. For Madison Perez, we've got $100. So here in the database, it's moving from the top to the bottom, but not in my application. In real time, we succeed to change the order's value, and it's applying to my array the new value. So why would you need to subscribe to events? Well, for different kinds of applications. Here we are on a CRM, so we've got clients here, a list of orders. But you could do that for a chat, of course, because in a chat, you would like that people get the new messages in real time. So you would subscribe into your application with the method channel on and subscribe. You would subscribe to the list of latest messages coming from your database. As you see, it's really fast to set up. It's really easy to use. Of course, if you want a filter, you would need to add the filters and check at the API docs for it. But here in some minutes, we succeed to subscribe to a channel and we succeed to update our value locally.